फाइव सेकेंड्स टू गो स्टार्ट फाइनली आई वुड लाइक टू से दैट देयर आर सर्टेन प्रैक्टिकलिटीज दैट कम इन टू दीज इशूज एंड दे नीड टू बी रिजोल्व फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन यूज सॉफ्टवेयर दैट स्क्रीन्स ट्रांजेक्शन्स अगेंस्ट द लिस ऑफ यू एन डेजिग्नेटेड एंटिटीज एंड इंडिविजुअल्स इन प्रैक्टिस सच स्क्रीनिंग सिस्टम्स रिटर्न अ हाई नंबर ऑफ फॉल्स पॉजिटिवस बेसिकली वट दैट मीन्स इज दैट बिकॉज ऑफ नेम सिमिलैरिटीज वैन यू अपडेट द लिस्ट ए हाई नंबर ऑफ नेम्स कम बैक टू दिस सिस्टम एज फॉल्स पॉजिटिवस एंड दैट परसेंटेज इज अराउंड नाइंटी फाइव सो दिस इज अ ह्यूज रिस्क रिस्क मैनेजर्स स्पेंड अ लोट ऑफ टाइम ट्राइंग टू फिगर दिस आउट विच इज वेरी वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर दैम फॉर एग्जाम्पल दे हैव टू टेक सच high volume of numbers and names and they have to get into a menial job of separating them which they could use for some other thing on behalf of bahujan samaj party and behan kumari mayawati ji i would like to support this bill i have one more request we have not passed a single bill unanimously there are many bills that have been passed and there have been support from the opposition as well i think such a bill when everybody is supporting it sir i have one request we have honorable mlas from maharashtra i think it will be nice if you could welcome them sir i stand here in support of the bill that we are discussing today i would definitely like to quote what the india's stand at the un is it says that they are deeply concerned over proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and their delivery system the earlier speaker professor sogata babu has already spoken about it at length but in a synopsis i would like to say that india supports the full and effective implementation of the chemical weapons convention and emphasizes the strengthening of the opcw to fulfill its important mandate sir it is very good that we have brought in this bill and india has always had a very good and a positive image of a peace loving and peace making country so i congratulate the honorable minister for bringing in this bill but i would like to bring to the notice of the house of what he said he said that we have come to the new world order it is true that the world has changed there is a book by mr w s karas called defining weapons of mass destruction it is one of the papers where he had said that the center of study of weapons of mass destruction which is a national defense university has recommended why do we not expand the scope given how the world is changing even the war today globally is a hybrid war now as we call it they have recommended that india's definition of weapons of mass destructions is for nuclear biological and chemical weapons so can we expand it it may not be literally in this bill maybe in the next few months you could consider this this is my request to you there are these new challenges because of this new world order can we talk about radiology talk about high explosives talk about weapons of mass destruction or in fact potentially include cbrn weapons other means of causing massive disruptions such as cyber attacks electromagnetic attacks munitions if we could make it i think we will really set a very good order and a new precedent in the world that india is very serious and committed that is the only suggestion that i would like to make 
Besides this, I would like to put something on the table. In the larger scheme of things, it is a very small example. In Maharashtra recently, there was a small power crisis in Mumbai city for over three hours. People said it was an act of hacking. It was the electromagnetic system which collapsed. This could be a very small trial, we do not know. But for a city like Mumbai, to have no electricity is a big thing. We did not know how it stopped, how it collapsed. There was nothing wrong with the grid. Could it have been an attack? I have no evidence to prove it, but this is how the story begins. The only point I am trying to make here is, could we consider broadening the definition? Besides this, I would like to talk about some other issue which nobody else has mentioned and that is the genotic diseases. It is like a pandemic. There is a story that COVID-19 was probably an attack on the globe. Could we have a broad discussion on this? This is my suggestion to the Honorable Minister. What is interesting in this entire debate is this. When we brought the nuclear agreement, at that time we were sitting on that side and you were in a different role and there were a lot of objections to the agreement. I do not want to get into a tutu meme on this because it is a very serious bill. I am so glad that the agreement that the Honorable Manmohan Singh ji had led at that time to put India on the global map today has become a reality. In the nuclear suppliers group, we are a very important part. I really want to know from the Honorable Minister that with all the new friendships that you have made in the last few years, why have we not joined the group as yet? What are we doing to excel our position? America was very positive about it. There were a lot of nations which have supported India, but there are nations which have objected like New Zealand, Ireland, Austria, China. They have objected to us. Now, what is our position with such wonderful relations? I still remember this article. I was too tempted and I hope you indulge me with this and take it on a little lighter note or a little banter in parliament sometimes. There was a story which I was too tempted to talk about today. It says they talked, they posed and they left. The Indian Prime Minister and the Chinese President met 18 times since 2014. I stand corrected, it could be more. There were many, many meetings that they have had. I am a big one for dialogue. I am completely against any war. But what has happened to our position by having so many meetings where they talk, they post and they left? What really happened between these three activities when they talk, they post and they left? Something more substantial should come out of it. I would like to ask the Honorable Minister where this is. Like my colleague Sri Ritesh Pandey talked extensively about the financing of it, I would like to ask this from the Honorable Minister. It is a very good bill. I think that any such thing must be stopped. I think that the entire house is one voice supports your bill. The only clarification that I would like to ask is that there is a note in the statement of objects and reasons in 5b1 where it mentions freeze, seize or attach funds. I appreciate it as it is a wonderful thing, but what concerns me and more so because it is something very new. I am not a financial expert, but I hear so much about the dark net and the crypto and all these funding being done through this. This is not only our problem, it is a global problem. Right now, our country has taxed it at 30%. 
the honorable rbi governor and not just the present governor but several governors has constantly said about this kind of digital money or transaction as you called it right now i am really confused because it is not legal is what the government says but at the same time it is taxing it at 30% there is too much confusion so does an investor invest in it i am asking this because tomorrow the government will say if they are bringing in this into crypto then it could be an attack here but somebody could be paying in some other country how are we going to freeze seize or attach funds this is a completely gray area which i think we must deliberate upon it is not only about us but it is a global issue that we need to raise stop